In mathematics, a Fourier series is a way to represent a function as the sum of simple sine waves. More formally, it decomposes any periodic function or periodic signal into the sum of a set of simple oscillating functions, namely sines and cosines. The discrete-time Fourier transform is a periodic function, often defined in terms of a Fourier series. The Z-transform, another example of application, reduces to a Fourier series for the important case, Z equals 1. Fourier series are also central to the original proof of the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem. The study of Fourier series is a branch of Fourier analysis. History the Fourier series is named in honor of Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier, who made important contributions to the study of trigonometric series. After preliminary investigations by Leonhard Euler, Jean Laurent d'Alembert, and Daniel Bernoulli, Fourier introduced the series for the purpose of solving the heat equation in a metal plate. Publishing his initial results in his 1807 memoir sur la propagation de la chaleur dans les corps solides, and publishing his Théorie analytique de la chaleur in 1822. Early ideas of decomposing a periodic function into the sum of simple oscillating functions date back to the 3rd century BC, when ancient astronomers proposed an empiric model of planetary motions based on deference and epicycles. The heat equation is a partial differential equation. Prior to Fourier's work, no solution to the heat equation was known in the general case, although particular solutions were known if the heat source behaved in a simple way, in particular, if the heat source was a sine or cosine wave. These simple solutions are now sometimes called eigensolutions. Fourier's idea was to model a complicated heat source as a superposition of simple sine and cosine waves, and to write the solution as a superposition of the corresponding eigensolutions. This superposition or linear combination is called the Fourier series. From a modern point of view, Fourier's results are somewhat informal, due to the lack of a precise notion of function and integral in the early 19th century. Later, Peter Gustav Lejeune de Riclet and Bernhard Riemann expressed Fourier's results with greater precision and formality. Although the original motivation was to solve the heat equation, it later became obvious that the same techniques could be applied to a wide array of mathematical and physical problems, and especially those involving linear differential equations with constant coefficients for which the eigensolutions are sinusoids. The Fourier series has many such applications in electrical engineering, vibration analysis, acoustics, optics, signal processing, image processing, quantum mechanics, econometrics, thin-walled shell theory, etc. Definition In this section, S denotes a function of the real variable x, and S is integrable on an interval x0, x0 plus p for real numbers x0 and p. We will attempt to represent S in that interval as an infinite sum, or series, of harmonically related sinusoidal functions. Outside the interval, the series is periodic with period P. It follows that if S also has that property, the approximation is valid on the entire real line. We can begin with a finite summation, is a periodic function with period P, using the identities. We can also write the function in these equivalent forms, where, the inverse relationships between the coefficients are, when the coefficients are computed as follows, approximates on and the approximation improves as an infinity. The infinite sum, is called the Fourier series representation of in engineering applications. The Fourier series is generally presumed to converge everywhere except at discontinuities. Since the functions encountered in engineering are more well-behaved than the ones that mathematicians can provide as counterexamples to this presumption, in particular, the Fourier series converges absolutely and uniformly to S whenever the derivative of S is square integrable. If a function is square integrable on the interval x0, x0 plus p, then the Fourier series converges to the function at almost every point. 
Convergence of Fourier series also depends on the finite number of maxima and minima in a function which is popularly known as one of the Dirichlet's condition for Fourier series. See Convergence of Fourier series. It is possible to define Fourier coefficients for more general functions or distributions. In such cases convergence in normal weak convergence is usually of interest. Another visualization of an approximation of a square wave by taking the first one, two, three and four terms of its Fourier series. A visualization of an approximation of a sawtooth wave of the same amplitude and frequency for comparison. Example 1. A simple Fourier series We now use the formula above to give a Fourier series expansion of a very simple function. Consider a sawtooth wave in this case. The Fourier coefficients are given by it can be proven that Fourier series converges to s at every point x where s is differentiable, and therefore, when x equals pi, the Fourier series converges to zero, which is the half sum of the left and right limit of s at x equals pi. This is a particular instance of the Dirichlet theorem for Fourier series. This example leads us to a solution to the Basel problem. Example 2. Fourier's motivation The Fourier series expansion of our function in example 1 looks more complicated than the simple formula s equals x pi. So it is not immediately apparent why one would need the Fourier series. While there are many applications, Fourier's motivation was in solving the heat equation. For example, consider a metal plate in the shape of a square whose side measures pi meters, with coordinates 0, pi, times 0, pi. If there is no heat source within the plate, and if three of the four sides are held at 0 degrees Celsius, while the fourth side, given by y equals pi, is maintained at the temperature gradient T equals x degrees Celsius for x in, then one can show that the stationary heat distribution is given by here. Shine is the hyperbolic sine function. This solution of the heat equation is obtained by multiplying each term of eq, 1 by shine, shine. While our example function s seems to have a needlessly complicated Fourier series, the heat distribution t is non-trivial. The function t cannot be written as a closed form expression. This method of solving the heat problem was made possible by Fourier's work. Other applications Another application of this Fourier series is to solve the Basel problem by using Parseval's theorem. The example generalizes and one may compute zeta for any positive integer n. Other common notations The notation cn is inadequate for discussing the Fourier coefficients of several different functions. Therefore, it is customarily replaced by a modified form of the function, such as or s, and functional notation often replaces subscripting. In engineering, particularly when the variable x represents time, the coefficient sequence is called the frequency domain representation. Square brackets are often used to emphasize that the domain of this function is a discrete set of frequencies. Another commonly used frequency domain representation uses the Fourier series coefficients to modulate a Dirac comb, where f represents a continuous frequency domain. When variable x has units of seconds, f has units of hertz. The teeth of the comb are spaced at multiples of 1 p, which is called the fundamental frequency can be recovered from this representation by an inverse Fourier transform. The constructed function s is therefore commonly referred to as a Fourier transform. Even though the Fourier integral of a periodic function is not convergent at the harmonic frequencies, beginnings, this immediately gives any coefficient act of the trigonometrical series for phi for any function which has such an expansion. It works because if phi has such an expansion, then the integral can be carried out term by term. But all terms involving for jk vanish when integrated from minus 1 to 1, leaving only the kth term. In these few lines, which are close to the modern formalism used in Fourier series, Fourier revolutionized both mathematics and physics.
Although similar trigonometric series were previously used by Euler, D'Alembert, Daniel Bernoulli and Gauss, Fourier believed that such trigonometric series could represent any arbitrary function. In what sense that is actually true is a somewhat subtle issue and the attempts over many years to clarify this idea have led to important discoveries in the theories of convergence, function spaces, and harmonic analysis. When Fourier submitted a later competition essay in 1811, the committee concluded that the manner in which the author arrives at these equations is not exempt of difficulties in dot his analysis to integrate them still leaves something to be desired on the score of generality and even rigor. Birth of harmonic analysis since Fourier's time. Many different approaches to defining and understanding the concept of Fourier series have been discovered, all of which are consistent with one another, but each of which emphasizes different aspects of the topic. Some of the more powerful and elegant approaches are based on mathematical ideas and tools that were not available at the time Fourier completed his original work. Fourier originally defined the Fourier series for real-valued functions of real arguments, and using the sine and cosine functions as the basis set for the decomposition. Many other Fourier-related transforms have since been defined, extending the initial idea to other applications. This general area of inquiry is now sometimes called harmonic analysis. A Fourier series, however, can be used only for periodic functions, or for functions on a bounded interval. Extensions Fourier series on a square We can also define the Fourier series for functions of two variables x and y in the square, minus pi, pi, times, minus pi, pi. Aside from being useful for solving partial differential equations such as the heat equation, one notable application of Fourier series on the square is in image compression. In particular, the JPEG image compression standard uses the two-dimensional discrete cosine transform, which is a Fourier transform using the cosine basis functions. Fourier series of Bravais lattice periodic function The Bravais lattice is defined as the set of vectors of the form, where near integers and i are three linearly independent vectors. Assuming we have some function, f, such that it obeys the following condition for any Bravais lattice vector r, f equals f, we could make a Fourier series of it. This kind of function can be, for example, the effective potential that one electron feels inside a periodic crystal. It is useful to make a Fourier series of the potential then when applying Bloch's theorem. First, we may write in any arbitrary vector r in the coordinate system of the lattice, where i equals i. Thus we can define a new function. This new function is now a function of three variables, each of which has periodicity a1, a2, a3 respectively. If we write a series for g on the interval 0, a1, for x1, we can define the following, and then we can write further defining. We can write g once again as Finally applying the same for the third coordinate we define, we write g as rearranging. Now, every reciprocal lattice vector can be written as where Lear integers and g are the reciprocal lattice vectors. We can use the fact that to calculate that for any arbitrary reciprocal lattice vector k and arbitrary vector in space r, their scalar product is and so it is clear that in our expansion, the sum is actually over reciprocal lattice vectors. We're assuming we can solve this system of three linear equations for x, y, and z in terms of x1, x2 and x3 in order to calculate the volume element in the original Cartesian coordinate system. Once we have x, y, and z in terms of x1, x2 and x3, we can calculate the Jacobian determinant which after some calculation and applying some non-trivial cross-product identities can be shown to be equal to 
The denominator is exactly the volume of the primitive unit cell which is enclosed by the three primitive vectors A1, A2 and A3. In particular, we now know that we can write now H as an integral with the traditional coordinate system over the volume of the primitive cell, instead of with the X1, X2 and X3 variables and C is the primitive unit cell, thus is the volume of the primitive unit cell. Hilbert space interpretation in the language of Hilbert spaces. The set of functions, n, z, is an orthonormal basis for the space L2 of square integrable functions of minus pi, pi. This space is actually a Hilbert space with an inner product given for any two elements f and g by the basic Fourier series result for Hilbert spaces can be written as this corresponds exactly to the complex exponential formulation given above. The version with sines and cosines is also justified with the Hilbert space interpretation. Indeed, the sines and cosines form an orthogonal set. And furthermore, the sines and cosines are orthogonal to the constant function 1. An orthonormal basis for L2 consisting of real functions is formed by the functions 1 and square root 2 cos, square root 2 sin with n equals 1, 2. The density of their span is a consequence of the stone weirs trass theorem, but follows also from the properties of classical kernels like the fej Yakutar kernel. Properties we say that f belongs to if f is a 2 pi periodic function on R which is k times differentiable, and its kth derivative is continuous. If f is a 2 pi periodic odd function, then n equals 0 for all n. If f is a 2 pi periodic even function, then b n equals 0 for all n. If f is integrable, and this result is known as the riemann lebers gay lemma, a doubly infinite sequence and in C0 is the sequence of Fourier coefficients of a function in L1 if and only if it is a convolution of two sequences. In C, if, then the Fourier coefficients of the derivative f can be expressed in terms of the Fourier coefficients of the function f via the formula, if, then, in particular, since tends to zero, we have that tends to zero, which means that the Fourier coefficients converge to zero faster than the kth power of n. Parsifal's theorem. If f belongs to L2, then, Plancherel's theorem. If it coefficients and then there is a unique function such that for every n, the first convolution theorem states that if f and g are in L1, the Fourier series coefficients of the 2 pi periodic convolution of f and g are given by, where, the second convolution theorem states that the Fourier series coefficients of the product of f and g are given by the discrete convolution of the n sequences. Compact groups One of the interesting properties of the Fourier transform which we have mentioned, is that it carries convolutions to pointwise products. If that is the property which we seek to preserve, one can produce Fourier series on any compact group. Typical examples include those classical groups that are compact. This generalizes the Fourier transform to all spaces of the form L2, where G is a compact group, in such a way that the Fourier transform carries convolutions to pointwise products. The Fourier series exists and converges in similar ways to the minus by pi case. An alternative extension to compact groups is the Peter Weyl theorem, which proves results about representations of compact groups analogous to those about finite groups. Riemannian manifolds If the domain is not a group, then there is no intrinsically defined convolution. However, if X is a compact Riemannian manifold, it has a Laplace-Beltrami operator. The Laplace-Beltrami operator is the differential operator that corresponds to Laplace operator for the Riemannian manifold X. Then, by analogy, one can consider heat equations on X. Since Fourier arrived at his basis by attempting to solve the heat equation, the natural generalization is to use the eigensolutions of the Laplace-Beltrami operator as a basis. This generalizes Fourier series to spaces of the type L2, where X is a Riemannian manifold. 
The Fourier series converges in ways similar to the minus bar pi case. A typical example is to take x to be the sphere with the usual metric, in which case the Fourier basis consists of spherical harmonics. Locally compact abelian groups The generalization to compact groups discussed above does not generalize to non-compact, non-abelian groups. However, there is a straightforward generalization to locally compact abelian groups. This generalizes the Fourier transform to L1 or L2, where G is an LCA group. If G is compact, one also obtains a Fourier series, which converges similarly to the minus pi pi case, but if G is non-compact, one obtains instead a Fourier integral. This generalization yields the usual Fourier transform when the underlying locally compact abelian group is R.